Hey guys, just got done watching 2013's Crank. Yes, the cover is amazing, but the film is okay. And I'll get into that in a minute. So the film stars Nick Renault, Henry Monfries, Jimen de la Pena. What is it with these weird, funny names? And I'll try and read them. Hannah Kasolka, Alistair James, Renee Cadet, Rachel Durham, Van Just Skulls. And it was directed by Yu Wing Lam. Uh, well, let's move this camera over a bit. There we go. That's better. I'm all in the middle. So basically, this film basically focuses on two main characters, and they are Connor Burns and Jordan Bloom. Let me put this down for a minute. It starts off with them sitting to hanging out and with their friend Chunk, who's like their female overweight friend, who basically Connor makes not Connor Jordan makes fun of and says she's useless. And to be honest with you, through the movie she isn't useless, but she's she's very annoying. You know, she gets on your nerves quite a bit because she says the word man a lot and like. What do you think of that, man? And she uh, isn't really in the film that much. She is at the beginning and she is at the end. But other than that, you kind of have her on the phone. So basically, Connor wants to prank Dax, who basically bullied him and his mate Omar is basically in on it, basically. They want to prank Dax and I think they want to get Omar too, but Dax is the main one. Well, Connor does. The others will be like, oh, yeah, yeah. And he basically gets his nose broken by Dax in a, in the camera shop, I think. You don't see it's implied. And he's drunk that he goes, he's gonna, he wants to kill him. Mere for, uh, you know, wants to kill him. Not literally, but, you know, like in the sense of get him. So the next day, <laughs> he went this plan but said, uh, we set up the prank. He enjoys it. Set up the prank. We record the prank. We upload and millions watch it. And then we get the ad revenue from it. And I was in tears of laughter at that. Because I was so funny. Because that's what people on YouTube do. You know, they do pranks. Or they do these epic fouls. Or whatever. Uh, to make money. So I thought that was quite funny. So, so basically, it's sorting that out. And... He does all this thing, like, I think they're in their skull or something. And they've got these, they're, they're dressed up, as, they've got clown makeup on and that. And he's got this gun and he says he's going to, you know, scare them crapless, basically. And sadly, between you and me, it, it doesn't look as good as this mask. But the biggest problem, in my view, is the fact that the mask should have been used. And there should have been a killer who was using it because it's so cool and so creepy. And I thought, oh, this is going to be a clan horror movie. And it wasn't. So that was quite disappointing. So anyway, basically what happens is Dax wants to record him back. And he goes around Jordan's and starts bashing on the door. And Jordan's like, who is it? And he goes, kick, let me in. I'm going to kick that bloody door in. So... Jordan lets him in and Connor ends up hitting him with the skateboard and knocking him out and then they end up tying him up and tying Dax up downstairs and then but before all that I forgot to say this Jordan's obsessed with this girl called Eve and he wants he does a lot of his birthday piping but Connor makes fun of and she turns out he gives her this like this um Brooch, but it's been in his family for years, for decades, you know, and like family members. And he puts it on her, and she's like, Oh, maybe I can't. And he says something about his diamonds in it, and she goes, Oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, thank you, that's sweet. And you're a bit like, Mm hmm. So, Dax is tied downstairs, and Connor basically goes upstairs because the doorbell goes, and it turns out to be Eve. And she says something like, oh, you're going to get what's coming to you, Connor. And you're a bit like, and then you hear a gunshot. And it, and it turns out that Jordan has killed Dax. 
But he tell, as Connor's about to take the bag off his head, he says, don't do it. And that's when things start coming in your head. Like, was the doorbell ringing to kind of deceive him so he didn't see what was happening? Is the bag not allowed to come off because the person's still alive underneath? You kind of have this fault in your mind, but you think, nah, you know? So then it basically, then basically, Jordan says he's cut him up and put him in bags. And then they have a, right, then basically his friend Omar, Dax's friend Omar, bangs on the door and grabs hold of Connor. And he says, Where's Dax? Where's Dax? Right? And he kicks him in the car and says to him, Oh, I'm going to give your eye, your eye hole eight inches of black thunder. <laughs> Oh, that was one of my favourite quotes from the movie. Eight inches of black thunder. <laughs> well, at this point, Connor's kind of having a bit of a breakdown because he's like, uh, because he's thinking about how Dax is dead. So basically, Omar ends up going to Connor's house, not Connor's house, Jordan's house, and Jordan ends up hitting him on the head a bit, I guess a bit kind of like uh, Tex Chainsaw Massacre-wise. Which I thought was pretty cool. But you don't see him. You see the guy on the floor. And you see the camera drop on the floor. And you see blood. And the really good thing I like about this movie. Was I like the tint of the camera. Because the camera was half broken. Like semi broken and damaged. Every now and again you'd get flickering on it. And you'd get this kind of orangey. Kind of purple tint into it. And I really really like that. Because it really helped the setting for me. I liked it because to me it was realistic. Considering I've got a camera like this one, and it's broken and it's all like all purple, like that, it actually was pretty good. I actually liked it. So he says to Connor, "Oh, I've come downstairs, and there's two loads of bags. There's Dax and Omar, and he tells Connor to go buy the bag, and he tells him to lift the bag and hug it. And I thought that was quite funny." So then basically he's tormenting Connor through like 20 minutes of the movie. Like, going in the bedroom going, what are you doing, Connor? And then calling Chunk back and saying that Connor's making things up because he's a prankster. And then he takes him out when he's out with Eve. Because he's dating Eve now. Now that Dax is gone, he's exclusive with Eve. And you're like... Yeah, this girl doesn't seem like the type to get with you, especially after the brooch thing, you know? So, he's sitting there, he's like, oh, you killed him, you killed him. He's like, you liar, and all this stuff. So, then basically, you see Eve on the floor, a little bit later in the movie, suffocating dead. And Connor's like, uh, uh, and all this other stuff. And then, all of a sudden, at one point in the movie, they go, have you had enough yet? And it turns out all three of them are still alive. Eve, Omar, and Dax. And they were tormenting him. And Jordan's like, ha, 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 ha. But the best part is when he's carrying the bags, the dead bags, he goes, now, this is what Jordan says, now I can finally be with Eve and you can go to your 13 Star Trek conventions in a row that you wanted to go to. And you're like, 13 Star Trek conventions. That's what this film is about. And the bit where um, uh, Connor beats up Dax and he goes, well, you're in a Klingon and you came out. <laughs> so anyway, so then basically Jordan goes up to Eve and goes, you said you were going to help me clear up. And she goes, oh, I'm going to go home. And basically they push him and go, the joke's over now. F off, basically. And he's on the floor all upset. And you're like, yeah. I, what I liked was what Connor planned happened to him. I kind of liked that because it was kind of like, you gave them the idea, buddy. And they were, and it was like, I was like, mm, I was like, they're going to get all the ad revenue. Now, they even said that. They said, oh, we did the epic prank, the best prank ever. And we're going to get all the ad revenue. And you're like, yeah. So then basically Jordan and Jordan and Connor they have their problems basically and Connor kind of talks to him and Jordan invites her him and Chunk over 
And then it turns out that he's actually got even Dax tied up downstairs. This is the very end of the movie. And and uh, Connor falls over and he lifts the camera up. And basically, Jordan shoots Dax. And I'm guessing he, and he, and he was going to shoot Eve. But then Connor basically hits him over the head and beats him to death, I'm guessing. And then you think, is he going to kill Eve? Because Shannon's like, don't do it. Don't do it. Connor, don't do it. You don't want to do this. And at that point, I thought this movie's gone down quite a lot. Because it started off really, really good. And then it went to a point where you're just sitting there going, come on, make it better again. You know? I mean, one of the biggest problems I had with the movie was the clown on the front. If it had been like that, it would have been awesome, you know? I would have liked that more. And I guess I didn't really like... I didn't really like how there was no parents around. Like, Jordan's dad was constantly away, apparently having bum sex with a bloke off the internet. That's what they said, not me, right? And you're like, really? Jordan's character completely changes. And it's obvious that they made him do that because he fancied Eve and it was peer pressure and he wanted to kind of impress her, which it didn't work. But you also find out that the brooch he gave her at the beginning, she pulled into a shop and he bought it again. So I guess that kind of was the final straw for him. So I did enjoy it. I thought the acting, it was pretty good. But I didn't like how after the middle part, it went kind of in the late middle to early ending. It fell apart. It went all over the place. And you're sitting there going, I really like this movie, but it could have been so much more. And that's one of the biggest problems, I think, with a lot of uh, independent straight-to-video horror movies. There could have been, there could be so much more if they had a little bit more effort in it. So, I kind of, I found it to be interesting and a great concept. And it was all filmed on a handheld camera in the film. The film, And it, you were like, there's a big part of it where you're like, why are they recording all this stuff? Because in re realistically, you wouldn't be. One of the reasons I did think that they were pranking him was because the camera was recording everything. And that was kind of creepy, because you're like, if this was real, would they really be doing that? No. So, I did have my suspicions of what was going to happen in the end. But, it was it was a fairly decent horror movie. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't like a horror horror movie, it was like horror elements. But if the, if the, if the film had been anything like the cover... It would have been so much better, I reckon. But I did enjoy it. I found it interesting. I found the first half pretty clever, pretty good. Not original, but pretty good. Then the second half, third part, then got itself back together again. So I would probably give this film a 3 out of 5 because I did really enjoy it. And I didn't get bored at all. I just questioned some of the actions of the characters. Like... Connor has all these ideas what he's going to do at the beginning. And then through the rest of the movie, he's whimpering and crying and being sick. And I thought that was quite realistic. Because what you're supposed to believe is the three, Chunk, Chunk, uh, Jordan and Connor, they're all they're supposed to be nerds. So it's obvious that Jordan kind of was influenced by Eve. And that Connor was kind of just mouthing and hoping. But I don't think he would have ever had the balls to actually do it. Not properly. And I think the only reason he hit that he hit Dax with the skateboard was because he was scared. Because I think just instinct hit in, you know, at that moment. Chunk, sadly, I wish he'd have been in more of the film because I would have found her. To be, I would have liked to have seen her more, seen the relationship built between her and the two guys. But it's mostly about the two guys. So it was kind of a very the cast in this movie was very. No, I'd say point about maple, maybe about seven people, maybe six, you know, all together in the movie. But yeah, so I'd give it a 3.0 out of 5, and I'd recommend giving it a go. Don't expect a lot from this movie, but go in and, you know, watch it and kind of, kind of watch it for what it is. A low-budget horror movie 
which has horror elements but isn't exactly horror horror but it's a lot of fun with a little bit with some twists but basically make go huh but it's still worth it i enjoyed the ride i'd watch it again maybe not anytime soon but i'd definitely watch it again because i like the story and i kind of like the relationship between jordan and connor i liked how connor was in control and was kind of having to go at jordan then it turned around to jordan being in control i like that so yeah 3.0 out of 5 I recommend giving it a go. If you see it cheap, definitely pick it up and give it a watch. So yeah, thanks guys for watching and take care and have a lovely day.